All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, everybody, relax. We have breaking news coming in. Tyree Kill, peace sign himself, has given KC the peace sign. It has been traded to the Miami Dolphins. I'm not going to be talking about the inner workings of the trade or why he was moved or whatever the fuck happened, but he is no longer in Kansas City, which is shocking uh, as of 48 hours ago, 24 hours ago, 20 fucking four minutes ago, and... As per usual, the Jets took another L. It was down to New York and Miami in the race for who was going to get Tyree Kill. And uh, and, it, and and it wasn't the Jets, obviously, because um, what else is fucking new? And then tomorrow's video, I'm going to sound like an idiot, proclaim myself possibly a Jets fan. And I was saying, like, you know, I'm not a front runner. Like, they're going to get Tyree Kill. Regardless, Tyree Kill moves over to Miami. We're going to talk about everything that it impacts and relates to as it relates to fantasy, football, dynasty, redraft, all of it. And since this is breaking, we're not going to do the whole intro shit. Let's just talk about the trade. So Chiefs send Tyree Kill to Miami in return for five draft picks. We have the 2022 first round pick, which is 29th overall, a second round pick, a fourth round pick, as well as the fourth and sixth round pick of next year's draft. Now, Tyree Kill gets a new uh, fat extension, giving him a four-year, $120 million extension, $72.2 million guaranteed, makes him the highest paid wide receiver at the N in the NFL. If you had any question about whether or not the NFL gives a fuck about uh, off-field incidents, just look at Tyree Kill, just look at Deshaun Watson. We have two of the highest paid players in the world, the highest paid at their position, regardless of what the fuck they do off the field. He is the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL right now. It is a massive upgrade We'll start on the Miami side of things, okay? My massive, massive upgrade for their quarterback, Tua Taglia Vola. More than just Harry Kill, don't let it go under the radar that they just signed Teron Armstead from the New Orleans Saints. Left tackle, five-year, $75 million contract. So they locked up his left tackle of the future, his wide receiver one of the future. They are doing everything in their power uh, to make sure they know whether or not Tua can succeed. And I word it that way because this, to me, does not tell me that they believe in Tua. This, to me, tells me that they believe in building their offense around whoever the fuck their quarterback is, right? They're giving to every opportunity to succeed, but you also are making these moves regardless of who your quarterback is, right? If two is terrible this year, they move on, and they got the correct pieces in place to have the next quarterback succeed. And the first thing we wanted to look at was the deep ball, right? When you think of Tyree Kill, you think of 60-yard touchdown passes. You think of your fantasy point scores going from 50 to 67 in the snap of your fingers, it's not good. It's not good going from Patrick Mahomes to Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, last year, I was calling Tua for the majority of the year the left-handed Teddy Bridgewater. Ironically, they went and you know signed Teddy Bridgewater. And when you look at Tua's deep passing, since he was a great deep passer in college, man. And I don't know if it was the injury. I don't know what happened, but he has not been the same player. He has not been a good deep passer in the NFL. I didn't really need to lay out advanced numbers and analytics and stuff for you to know that because if you've literally ever turned on a Miami game, you would have seen that from Tua and his lack of lack of wanting to throw the ball deep. And when he does, it's not, you know, it's not. And sometimes he's got some nice touch on it, but it's not a consistent thing. Regardless, I went back and looked at the numbers, okay? So I'm doing a deep dive on PFF. I looked at 37 qualified quarterbacks from last year, qualified in terms of just the number of deep balls that they have attempted. So if you look at... 37 qualified quarterbacks that threw passes of 20-plus yards or more. So we're just talking about deep passes in general. Here's where Tua ranks out of 37. 36th in deep pass rate. So just the percentage of his throws that he actually attempted to throw a deep ball, 36 out of 37. 7.5% of his passes were deep passes. 35th in terms of passing touchdowns on deep balls. He threw one single touchdown on deep pass attempts last year. He had a one to two touchdown to interception ratio. He was 21st overall, just in terms of PFF passing grade on deep passes. So below average and third in terms of turnover worthy plays. So plays that very easily could have been turnovers throwing to the defensive backs. 14.7% of his deep passes were turnover worthy plays. So obviously it is not good for Tyree Kill in his overall situation as it relates to fantasy. If you are a if you're a Tua owner in Dynasty, you're ecstatic because he went from someone who you could probably like maybe get a second for to getting this tackle, getting this wide receiver one. And honestly, if if I own Tua in Dynasty Leagues, I'm this is where I'm looking to sell him. I'm looking to sell him as high as I possibly can right now because I don't really believe in Tua, man. You could put all the pieces you want around him. He just doesn't seem like a player who's going to elevate the rest of his pieces, right? It's like Jimmy G where you can continue to stack players around him, but his fantasy production will just never match what the weapons for him actually 
do. So, I mean, for Tua, if we're talking about like Dynasty again, I'm selling redraft. It's like, I guess you can make the case for him being like a top 16 guy. I think what it does is it takes him from like a guy who was an auto fade for me going into this year to someone that like, I'll take, I guess, at value, or if he drops below value, he could be my quarterback, too, in a super flex league. I think that's probably the right pick. Like, he'll, he'll be an okay quarterback, too, in, in uh, super flex leagues. But as I said, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill moves pretty far down the redraft rankings. He goes from, like, a solidified top five, six-ish guy to, like, a back-end wide receiver one for me. I do think it might be exciting to see how Mike McDaniels uses him in this offense, though, right? He'll take advantage of his speed, particularly at the line of scrimmage, um, probably more than KC did. Although, you know, I was also looking at these numbers. Terry Kill did have 25 targets at or behind the line of scrimmage last year, which was the sixth highest number in the NFL among wide receivers. Ironically, Debo Samuel was one spot above him with 30 of them. So he was already used pretty heavily at the line of scrimmage. I do think that will be uh, a massive, massive part of his game in this Miami offense with Mike McDaniels. I think they're going to do a lot of waddle, a lot of hill at the line of scrimmage and kind of see what comes of it. And that's a good spot for Tua because, again, just like Jimmy G, you put the weapons around him and let them do the work. Don't don't ask him to do a lot of stuff downfield, which hurts Harry Kill, man, because he's not going to be bringing in those 60-yard touchdowns every other week, and that's what makes him so fascinating in, uh, in fantasy. So for me, I couldn't imagine myself now with Tua using – a first or even a second round uh, redraft pick on him. Now, I think like beginning of third is probably where you'll start to see him uh, go and, and rightfully so. And then we get to Jalen Waddle and it's like, this hurts Waddle a lot, man. I know people are going to be like, this fucking helps him. This spreads things out. It's like, dude, you're not adding one of the best wide receivers in the world to your team and saying that's an upgrade for you. Terry Kill automatically commands a 25 to 28% target share right off the rip. And last year, I hate to break it to you for all the people that love Jalen Waddle. He's a great player. He's fine. I'd love to have him on my dynasty team. He was a volume guy, man. When you look at the efficiency, yards per reception, 101st. Yards per target, 78th. Yards per route run, 42nd. With a target accuracy rating, 6th overall. Volume, 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 targets, targets, targets. Did he make a lot of plays downfield? No. He was all line of scrimmage. And that might continue, but now you're pulling the volume back because Tyree Kill is there. So he might, he might, you know, have games that he did last year in terms of 10 targets, 12 targets, 14 targets. They're not going to be as consistent. So for Waddle, this, this hurts him for me. In fantasy next year, He's probably like a wide receiver three for me. Um, In Dynasty, obviously, you know, you're fine. You're holding on to him and seeing what kind of comes to this offense. Maybe two hits and you have two explosive playmakers, but I'm not siding on that. That's not going to be like my main takeaway here. So that's mostly Miami side of things. Obviously, it's a big win for Tua. Also, you know, they had the left tackle. They had Tyree Kill. They had Chase Edmonds, a nice pass catcher out of the backfield. So they put together a nice little offense for this guy here for him to prove to us how bad he is if he does not succeed. When we move over to the Chiefs side of uh, of things, man, this is... Not good for Patrick Mahomes, man. This is this is gonna be a tough sell uh, on Patrick Mahomes being top three fantasy quarterback now without Hill. You know, you, you take a lot of guys over him. You take Josh Allen. You take I take Kyler Murray. I take you know. There's a lot of guys you take over him now, and uh, it's gonna be really interesting to see just how good of a quarterback he is without Tyreek Hill on the field. And I am not going out of my way to draft him next year. If he starts to drop, I could see a, a a window where he starts to drop to like quarterback six or seven. And in that case, I'm definitely fucking in. Listen, he's Patrick Mahomes, all right? You'll get another fast guy that can replace him. They have multiple first round picks now. Um, so they'll definitely be taking a wide receiver in the first round. They could, you know, they can grab Jameson Williams. He's probably right in that pocket of where he would get drafted at the back end of the first. And Jameson Williams, a guy who's coming off the torn ACL, so he won't be able to contribute right away. But it'd be perfect timing because, listen, the Chiefs are going to be a good enough team that are going to make the playoffs, even if it's a, a wild card team without Terry Kill. So by the time Jameson Williams is back from the ACL tear and he's ramped up and ready to go, that's when they can use him. So I think that makes a lot of sense because he's got that game breaking speed just like. Uh, Tyree Kill does. Obviously, it's yet to be seen if he's actually a, as good of a wide receiver as you know a, a top 15, top 20 guy in the NFL. But Jameson Williams has all the pieces to be the replacement perfect for uh, Tyree Kill. So the draft should be fucking interesting. It probably means about 92 more targets for Kelsey. And it's huge for Kelsey and Dynasty in particular because he's already old. He's already like at that point where you know if you own him, you're like, I probably got like two more years I could squeeze out of him. And now you get everything left you're squeezing all the fucking juice out of this lime here because even as his efficiency starts to dip and as he starts to break down as an older player you're getting enough volume that it won't fucking matter so this is huge for kelsey dynasty owners you just he's a guy that you just ride into the fucking sunset you don't try to trade kelsey you just let him rack especially if you're in a tight end premium league you you let him rack up 17 18 19 points per game for the next two years and call it a fucking day and now i mean you have juju who's just acquired so juju obviously 
I think you're looking at him as more of a like a, a wide receiver two than a questionable risky wide receiver three prior to this trade. I'll redo my rankings over the next couple of days. I'd imagine this makes Juju he'll probably be in like the wide receiver 18 to 20 range if I had to guess. And uh yeah, it's it's really it's a really big, big, uh big move for him in terms of his fantasy impact, even if he's not an efficient downfield player, like he'll still rack up a ton of targets over the middle of the field just because they don't have anyone else to throw the ball to. I believe Demarcus Robinson is out. I mean, Miko Hardman, oh my God, if you've ever seen a sell window for Miko Hardman right now is fucking it. Like people love to just continuously bring up his speed and all the things that he's good at doing, which is literally just like fast. And that's the end of the list. Like My argument for that is like, People like to say, like, oh, he's got the the skill set to be good if given the chance. It's like, do you know how bad you have to be to have that elite speed and not be able to produce on the football field? Like, you have to be really bad at football in order to have the attributes of an elite football player and not be able to produce. You understand that? Like, when everybody else is so non-talented compared to what you can do, it's impressive that you can't be good on the football field when you have all-world type skills, okay? It's a double negative. I don't see how people can't see that, okay? So... No to Mikol Harmon. You're getting him off your fucking team. Okay? You're selling Miko. You know, package Tua and Miko for fucking a first and a second right now. Do it. All right? That is my impact-breaking analysis on this trade right here. Terry Kill to the Miami Dolphins. Um, I probably missed some players that it might impact. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We do fantasy football videos, Dynasty Rookie, season long, every single day. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. If you're an audio guy like myself, we're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on all that shits. BDGE, Fantasy Football, that's how it's labeled on there. And make sure you leave a five-star rating and review if you listen via the ear holes. All right, I'm out of here. I'll see you all tomorrow morning.